Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? My name is DXSS Red, and today I thought it would be fun to look at some of these hacking shorts because some of them are really good. Did now, you know that hackers can... This channel, SumSub.com, is a really good channel. Like, they bring out good videos, but they also bring out really cool shorts like this one. Steal your data using crocodile clips. Let's replicate a well-known cyber attack called sniffing, which aims to intercept sensitive data in network traffic. For... It's a really cool attack that they're pulling off here, by the way. They're going to use those crocodile clips and they're actually going to make a little special Ethernet cable and you'll see it actually hooks onto the cable to steal some other password hash being sent. Really fucking cool. We take an Ethernet cable and cut off a section. We add an RJ45 connector to one side. Important to note here that only two wires are connected. Now I'll leave you to look up what they exactly do in that whole RJ45 transaction, but it's really interesting. Look it up. Right. Or just watch their full video, of course. They explain quite a lot on it and it's really fucking good. On the other, we add regular crocodile clips to the ends of each wire and we end up with this contraption. Now, we've prepared an experiment using this computer as our victim. We connect our device here and end up with a classic man-in-the-middle setup. To quickly scan for sensitive data, we use a special script. And voila! We've extracted the password hash automatically sent by the computer when connecting to the network drive. But there's no need to worry. Nowadays, this kind of attack is unlikely. If you want... So all of these networks here, they probably appear to be... This is fucking cool, by the way, because he's going to use his Flipper Zero to emulate networks, many different networks, and I have mine as well. I actually tried that, and it's super, super easy. And the thing as well is that, of course, you can emulate an existing one, an existing network, and then people think, oh, this is a free, like, for example, here in Belgium, we have a lot of these free networks from Telenet, from Proximus, and you can just emulate being one of their hotspots. It's super freaking easy. Legitimate, right? Yeah. But they're not. These are all fake networks? They're all powered by me. So as soon as you connect to any of those, I have your password, I have anything in between. Oh, man. So this is, is this how people are... Like the thing he's saying there, I have your password, I have anything in between. It's, it's of course, he's like, he could probably freaking do it. But the thing is, your average hacker isn't going to be that smart. What they could do is intercept traffic. But if that traffic is encrypted, it is still encrypted, you know? There are certain limitations. But what he could do and what he's emulating there probably is a sort of a bad... Well, I don't know what could happen, for example, as well. And I don't think it's in this case, but you could emulate Bluetooth and you could connect to a Bluetooth uh, device, a different Bluetooth device, and you could control it through Bluetooth. It's not in this case, of course, this is a different attack, but I know he's saying that to be spectacular. It's just not as easy as, oh, you connect to my network. Oh, now I can sniff everything from you. It's not that easy. The things are, they have to be in place as well. You need to have certain outdated software if you want to be able to hack that software, etc. So I like this video. Uh, I like this guy really. I like him a lot, by the way. He also has that hack. Stealing information. Yeah, it is. In this video. You see what I mean? He's like very, very thin. He has a thin face. He looks awesome. I love him, by the way. But the yeah. number one ethical hack. That's his name, by the way, Ryan Montgomery. If you want to go look him up, he's really cool. Number one ethical hacker is hard to define, of course, but I do look up to him. I love him. Yeah, that leads speed. You go, boy. Hack him. Now this is actually too. I have looked up how to hack Google on several occasions and have been successful within two minutes. So that is actually what hacking is like. Like in my mind, I'm just thinking of like having a security tool where I'm like, where, where I'm not sitting there, like typing all my code and I can just be there like this uh, with speech to text. Yo, can you send the post request to this endpoint? Yeah, just make up the JSON data for it. 
<laughs> okay, there's an arrow. It says it wants XML data. Can you turn it into XML? Like I'm just chilling there, you know, <laughs> sipping my mate. Cool. Can you insert an SQL injection test into the name field, please? Here's an example post request. Listen. <laughs> no, 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 ChatGPT. Do not fucking drop tables, my friend. I hate when ChatGPT does this stuff. Drop table users. Oh, really freaking funny. Good one, life over. You bet they'll make you overdressed. That's not hacking anymore, of course. Let's go on to the next one, see what we have here. 190. <laughs> If you want to learn ethical hacking, go to this website and click on lessons. That is so true. Hexplaining is a great website if you want to learn ethical hacking. It's one of the best. I like to go to this one. I like to go to Hack the Box, of course, Try Hack Me, but also Portswigger Academy. You have this website called 247CTF. There's a host of different options out there, but I really like Hexplaining. The most wanted hackers who got caught. Firstly, in 1981, Kevin Mitnick hacked into NORAD. He was then given the ability to control the missiles in the USA and move them wherever he wants. But thankfully, he never fired any. He was later Thank caught God. and given a five-year <laughs> prison sentence. Next, at the age of 10 years old, Graham Clark was already scamming people on Minecraft for their money. However, that wasn't enough for Graham because in for early 2021, he hacked the biggest Twitter <laughs> accounts in the world and made $725,000. He was immediately caught the next day and sentenced to three years in prison. And finally, in 2002, Gary McKinnon hacked into NASA's top secret files. And the point of this was he was looking for information on UFOs and aliens. He claimed to have saw pictures of these aircrafts, but he says someone is actually editing them out so we won't see them ourselves. Yeah, I don't know how to believe him. Ethical hacker career, under 60 seconds. Hackers mainly do type kyo Black hat hackers, jine unethical hackers bhi kehte. Or white hat hackers, jine ethical hackers kehte. Black hat hackers, government or companies ke computer systems pe attack karte. Chori or data breach ke purpose se. Or wahi, ethical hackers, government or companies ke permission se un system pe attack karte. Taki un systems ki kamzoriya or loopholes ko find karke unhe fix karke apne... Let's see what else we have here. When the scammer meets hacker, yeah, no, that's not interesting. Not looking into that one. What I'll do is start a ping on this phone. Ping basically ah, allows it, us yeah. to test connectivity I to a remote guy. website. In our mystery box, we have a watch. Looks like a watch. Nice. This isn't your standard watch. What this allows me to do is scan for Wi-Fi networks. So I can scan for access points. I can scan for end devices. If you want to speed this up, simply nice. scan for access points. What I can do now is select a Wi-Fi network to attack. I'm going to select an access point. In this case, I know somebody would really love this stuff. Marius, um, I think we found your next toy. <laughs> Do you think we need to worry about what they're putting in our electronics? Uh, yeah, I'll give you one example. I bought this awesome vacuum and mop. It completely connects to a Chinese server to transmit and receive information. When you plug it in, it says charging started, charging stopped. I think when you port it on and off, I can control that with my computer through a Chinese cloud server. There's no reason that that vacuum and mop should connect to a Chinese cloud. And at any point, they can change the way that functionality works and take over my home network. Do you think... Hey, that's no joke, by the way. I had the same thing like this. Not exactly the same, but something similar happened to me recently. Like I was, uh, I had a, uh, like a camera that I ordered off of Wish and you know, it has internet connection. It has pos possibility to save to the cloud. It has possibility to just save locally. And you can turn off any cloud interactions with it. You can just turn it off in the software and say, do not have cloud interactions. That way I was initially wanting to buy it because I could turn off those cloud interactions. Well, guess what? You could turn it off in the software, but that was just a front. It would keep interacting with the cloud and sending data back and forth and God knows what. Like, if I say something in the software, it doesn't mean that it actually happens in the hardware. And I don't even have to say any, everything in the software. Damn, shit's getting crazy, dude.
Did you know that you can be an accomplice to a hacker attack while watching a movie? In 2022, the number of botnet uh, attacks botnet, reached yeah. a record high. Botnet is a large number of computers infected with single malware, controlled remotely by hackers. They're also called zombies. These zombies can number in the millions. See, their purpose. That's why I like their uh, content so much. Some subcom, some subcom, like they have good content. They talk about good stuff. It, it's interesting, but they bring it visually interesting. They bring it where a wider audience could enjoy this. I love their stuff. I really do. Go check them out. To carry out hacking attacks, like spreading malware, spamming, stealing personal data, and performing DDoS attacks. And you can not notice it for a very long time, because they act covertly. The main signs are the computer slowing down, unknown... Like I had this, like I wrote this guide like years ago where I was talking about how to know if you were hacked. And like one of the things that I put up there was the fact that you had, like you could see in your, in your um, computer, if you go to your disk space, you could see in Windows how much you still had available. You could see how much was used up and you could see the total. And like, it was easy to see sometimes because there were discrepancies between the total and what was used up plus what was free. Like you would have one gigabyte used up, two gigabytes free, and in total there would be maybe uh, like seven or eight gigabytes, you know, it, it just wouldn't add up. That's, that's one of the things that we would look out for. Of course, computers slowing down due to unknown processes would be a big one as well. Back in the day, everybody's freaking computer was slowing down, dude. Like you would install the biggest crap on there and it would slow down immediately. It, it's just how it went. After a while, these computers, they weren't meant up to clean up after themselves either. So if you installed, you had a bunch of things sticking around. It's just, and even these days, it's just inevitable that your computer gets slow. Like, it's, it's a hard one, this one. Processes in the task manager eat up memory or CPU resources and parasitic traffic. This is difficult because these days in your uh, device manager, or what's it called, task manager in Windows, you can't even properly see anymore. Like, if I have, like, let's say, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and it's all taken up start counting all of these pieces of RAM that are actually taking up and see what should be taking up. Like, it's insane. You can't do that manually anymore. So you would need some kind of program or application that will watch out for you in that regard. So what do you do? Disconnect from the internet and scan with an antivirus up to date database, preferably from an external drive like a USB. And to prevent it in- Yo, no joke. We had this CD that would scan things on boot up. It would boot up and it wouldn't boot up into your normal operating system. It would just go, I think, I don't remember what it was from, but it had a bunch of recovery tools on it. And that thing was a lifesaver back in the day when I fixed computers because I could just boot from the disk or in the later stages, I had a pen drive. I could just boot from the freaking pen drive and solve everything I needed to do a virus scan and stuff like that, but also do other recovery tools. No joke, I love that thing. That, that was my lifesaver. I loved it so much, I had 10 copies of it. No kidding, one for the car, one for at home. I would drive around and fix computers as well, of course. Future one, use that. Antivirus. Well, Two, dumb. use antivirus. Three, at least use an antivirus. <laughs> and be safe. It depends, of course. Like on Linux, you don't need antivirus. Like, that's the thing. I know that they're making videos for a broader audience, but this one, yeah. Ease. And then you can oh, also, look. of course, have directly HTML tag insertion, which would look yeah. something like this. For example, <laughs> you have a document here with a title yeah. and then you have a like this you have a header gotcha. you have a little script in here mm -hmm. and it's going to prompt you for your name and it's going to set the inner html yeah. uh, now this is an example of dom cross-site scripting which we'll talk about later because it sets the inner html here and it's good smart directly into the HTML. So we can, for example, insert a script tag in here or a image source equals X tag with an error handler in there, which would look something like on error equals alert, for example. But again, don't use alert, use confirm. So we can insert that kind of stuff in here and it would directly put that ease. 
And the now, so the part of this cut off, of course, but what you don't see on here is that it actually inserts into a HTML tag attribute because this is in the HTML tag attribute context. But when you put that into the inner HTML, it will come into an HTML tag attribute. So I like this guy. This rat is freaking amazing. Well, you should give him a follow. <laughs> It's really, really coincidental, by the way, that I came across myself. Can the Flipper Zero break into a password protected? F yes, of course, if you connect it through USB and uh, execute bad USB functions. Oh, yes and no. Let me explain. A bad USB is basically a fake USB. It looks like a normal USB. See, I freaking called it. I called it. But it doesn't act like a normal USB. It typically emulates a keyboard and can be used to execute whatever commands you would like. The Flipper Zero can- The thing with these short zoot is that they're rotting your freaking brain as I'm watching it. It's like every single word pops up on screen which grabs your freaking attention and it screams, screams for your attention. It's, yeah, I mean, what the fuck is this generation getting to, dude? Also do that when plugged into a phone. After plugging in the flipper to the device, you- I say that as I am watching shorts with you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's that really hack stuff, of course. Let's see what else do we have. Guys, three hacking is here, but I told you, you fool, though, but illegal too. And number one, what you listen to, you will hear. Number three, flipper zero. Guys, your device can hack anything with ease. Go ahead, hack it. Even if it's a Wi-Fi issue, no. Even if it's a Tesla car, it was hacked. Number two. Yo, I can't help it, but I don't know if this is Indian or not. But like, bye. This is freaking ridiculously cool. How fast you guys can talk. It's like blah, 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 blah. I can't you I talk fast and I freaking think I fuck talk fast. I can't keep up with you guys when I hear this stuff. Not that I know that much Hindi by the way, but damn. Do legal buy we're building a hacker drone it's a real experiment i love this by the way freaking hacker drones that can be a real freaking big problem of course like this is something that could be used in warfare those types of hacker drones where maybe you want to fly over to a command post and then just freaking hack the fucking command post of the enemy fucking cool shit <laughs> we're building a hacker drone it's a real experiment we assembled the drone using these parts now let's the fact that it's made from like a homemade assembly is even worse hack into their computer we fly up to the window, launch the attack, and it all happens in seconds. And now we have access to everything. Our device finds vulnerabilities in the NRF24L chip. This chip is in the Logitech U0007 adapter. This is how we take control of the computer's input wireless devices. What did we use to create the attack device? The Crazy Radio PA USB adapter with an antenna used as a controller. We upgrade the Crazy Radio PA to make it a hacking device. A few lines of Python code to make the adapter send commands like a keyboard. We also use a mini Raspberry Pi. Again, a bad USB, but what this is doing is it's trying to hack a, a like that, that little thing you saw. That's basically a USB device for your keyboard. And the thing is, I'm going to assume that it works on 2.4 gigahertz. So it's going to, this little drone is going to try to be your keyboard. And the moment it comes into range and if one of these things, like one of these little chips that actually is connected to a computer, it will start sending out those signals, I'm assuming with the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's a really cool thing, but on that bombshell, I'm gonna leave you guys because I am tired as hell and I need some sleep because look at me, look at me. I need my fucking beauty sleep. Good night, amazing hackers. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.